Hi hey guys, this is pre-algebra lesson 6-4, solve inequalities using addition or subtraction. In this lesson, we'll be able to solve inequalities using addition or subtractions. So let's look at explain it. Selena and Martin are waiting at the bus stop. The number lines show the possible wait times and minutes T for Selena and Martin. So Selena is pointing at this bus stop sign, bus every 15 minutes. So every, every 15 minutes, a bus will come. Uh, Martin's looking at his phone. It says blue bus line is delayed. And on the number line, Selena's possible wait time is um, all the numbers below 15. You don't really know when exactly the bus is going to come, but it comes every 15 minutes. So the maximum you can wait would probably be around 15 minutes. Martin's possible wait time is just delayed. Um, and you know it's just going to be more than 15 minutes. OK, so let's look at part A. Who anticipates a longer wait? So who do you think is going to wait longer? Justify your response with a mathematical expl explanation. Just look at the inequality number line. Compare the numbers here. Yes, they both start at 15, but are the numbers, uh, where are the numbers that are greater at, at Martin's graph, right? So Martin is probably going to wait a lot longer than Selena's, and he doesn't know how much he needs to wait at all, right? Selena knows at least how much she's going to wait maximum, but Martin doesn't have that maximum amount, right? So let's explain that Martin's, Martin's possible wait time is longer than Selena's because his number line includes all lengths of time that are greater than 15 minutes. Selena wait time. Selena's possible wait times are a maximum. If Selena and Martin both wait 10 minutes for the bus, whose possible wait time was closer to his or her actual wait time? Okay. If they both wait 10 minutes, then whose uh, who's possible wait time was closer to her actual one? Okay, 10 minutes on Selena's graph is this one. Okay, Martin's 10 minutes on the graph is this one. So is 10 minutes included in Salinas? Yes, she knew um, she could have waited 10 minutes, right? Martin, she, he thought he was gonna wait a lot longer than that. So 10 minutes was, was not even close to his guess, right? So just looking at the graph, Salinas, is closer to her actual time because, because her number line includes 10 minutes, but Martin's number line does not. So focus on math practices, be precise. If Selena and Martin both wait exactly 10, 15 minutes for the bus, whose possible wait time was closer to his or her actual wait time? Explain. So what if it was 15 minutes? Okay. So 15 minutes is exactly here. 15 minutes is exactly here. But do you think it's included in both points? 
because if you graph inequality, closed circle in, uh, says means what? Closed circle means it includes 15, right? So 15 is included here. 15 open circle means it's not included. So you can still say that the Salinas graph is more accurate to the actual one, right? So Salinas, because um, the number line for Salinas possible weight times shows the number of minutes less than or equal to 15 minutes. What about Martin? Martin's number line shows only wait times greater than 15 minutes, not including 15. Okay. So oh, that's important in a lot of cases, especially in inequality. Okay, let's look at the next page. In this lesson, we'll think about how is solving inequalities with addition and subtraction similar to and different from solving equations with addition and subtraction. Let's look at example one. Solve inequalities that involve addition. On the airline that Raul is going, is using, the weight limit for both suitcases combined is 50 pounds. How much can Raul's second bag weigh without going over the limit if his first bag is 38 pounds? You can write inequality because the second bag doesn't have to be one exact answer, right? There are many possibilities. So use inequalities to say 38 is the weight of the first bag and the second bag is unknown, so that could be P, but it needs to be less than or equal to 50, which is the baggage weight limit, okay? And you can solve the inequality like you solve the equations, okay? So in order to solve for inequality, you also need to isolate the variable P. In order to do that, you wanna get rid of 38. How do you do that? Use the opposite operation. So if you're adding 38, you subtract 38 on both sides, and then you get P must be less than equal to 12, okay? So use, that in, use the number line to graph it. You can say our second, uh, her, his second luggage could be 12, 11, 10, or anything less than 12, okay? All right, let's look at try it. See if we can do it by ourselves. Um, pause the video and figure it out by yourself and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, <clears throat> so Kyoko has completed 26 hours of community service. Her goal is to complete at least 90 hours this semester. Write and solve an inequality to show how many more hours H Kyoko needs to complete to meet her goal. Use the number line to graph the solutions. So the important information here in, uh, that you need to note. Oops. Is 26 hours. So she's done 26 hours of community service. And her goal is 90 hours at least. At least means, does it include 90 or not? If she does 90, would it be at least 90? Yeah, because least is 90. And then she wants to go greater than that, right? So you're going to do greater than or less than? Is it greater than equal to or less than equal to? So H plus, so H is how much you need to do more, but um, she already did 26 hours. So she just needs to add H hours, but does this have to be greater than or smaller than 90? You need to go greater than 90 or at least greater than like 90, right? 
So this must be greater than or equal to 90. Now solve for your age. H plus 6, 26, you subtract 26 on both sides. And then your H is going to be 90 minus 26, which is 64. Okay. So your goal is anything greater than or equal to 64. Let's graph that. Where is 64 in the line? One, two, three, four. 64 is right here. Do we draw an open circle or a closed circle? This means closed circle. So you circle and shade your circle. So you go left or right. Left is less, right is greater. So you're gonna go to the right, okay? There you go. Convince me, is there more than one solution to a problem about Kyoko? Explain. Give one value that is a solution and one value that is not a solution. Is it just, is there only one solution to this problem? Like, does it have to be a number? Is, could H, does H has to be one number or could it be more than one number? Could H be 64? Yeah, it includes. H could be 64 or 70. Yeah, H is greater than or equal to 64 means it has to be greater than or it could be exactly 64, okay? So one value that is a solution, you can say 64 or 70 or 90 or anything that's greater than 64, okay? One value that is not a solution, is anything that's not 64, which is less than 64, okay? So 63 or one or zero, you know, anything less than that, okay? There are many solutions. So let's write the answer in words. Yes, there are many solutions. So for example, 70 could be a solution. 60 is not a solution. There. Okay, let's look at example two on the next page. Solve inequalities that involve subtraction. The weather forecast predicted that the evening temperature could get as low as negative 12.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Between afternoon and evening, the temperature dropped by 7.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which was consistent with the forecast. What could afternoon temperature T have been? So first you're gonna write an inequality to represent the situation. T is what you don't know in this situation, which is the afternoon temperature. So afternoon temperature minus 7.5, because it dropped by 7.5, is going to be greater than or equal to negative 12.5 as low. Get as low as negative 12.5 means the lowest you can get is negative 12.5. Okay, lowest you can get. Okay, and then drop by that means just subtraction. So t minus 7.5 must be greater than or equal to negative 12.5 because that number needs to be greater than negative 12.5 because negative 12.5 should be the lowest that you could go, okay? That's the minimum account amount and it includes your minimum amount, okay? And so solving for that inequality, you get t is greater than or equal to negative five. And graphing that, you draw a closed circle because it includes negative five, okay? And then you go right because T must be greater than. So how is addition property of inequality similar to the subtraction property of inequality? Adding and subtracting, you're just adding or subtracting on, on both sides, okay? So try this question. The speed limit on a road drops down to 15 miles per hour around the curve. Mr. Jared slows down by 10 miles per hour as he drives around the curve. 
He never drives about the speed limit. At what speed was Mr. Jared driving before the curve? Graph the solution. Okay, can you, can you translate the words into inequalities? So your, where's your variable? What is your variable gonna represent? It's on your last question. At what speed was he driving before the curve? So you can say X is the speed he was driving before the curve, okay? And then you can write an inequality. X before, before the, the curve, right? Before the curve. Drops down to 15 miles. So drops down to means it becomes the speed becomes 15. So it's going to be 15 later around the curve. Okay. Mr. Jerry slows down by 10 miles. So whatever he was driving, he slows down 10 miles. So subtract 10. And that's going to be what of 15? The speed limit means you cannot go over 15, but you can get un up to 15, right? So X minus 10 must be the speed at the curve. So it must be what? It cannot go over 15. So it must be less than equal to 15, okay? So if you solve for that, what do you have? Okay, this is the inequality that you have that you can set up and then you need to solve for it. Add 10 on both sides and you get X is less than or equal to 25. So he must have been driving um, not any more than 25. So Mr. Jared was driving 25 miles per hour or less. Or the curve. Okay, and then you're gonna write that solution in your number line. Graph the solution. Okay, so 25, 25 is here. You shade your circle. And then you can say that's 20, that's 15, that's 10, five, zero. And you need to go lower than that, okay? Oh, I think I was muted. So solve the inequality x minus one half less than negative two third. You're gonna graph the solution. Okay, so um, you're gonna, it's the same. You're gonna add one half on both sides so that you can isolate the variable x. But when you're adding fractions, you need to rationalize the denominator and make the denominators equal to each other before you add them, okay? Okay, and then you can graph um, the inequality. When you have a less than, then it means you do not include um, negative one over six, and you just shade the arrow on the left so that it represents um, all the numbers that's less than negative one over six, okay? So um, yeah, if you have fractions, you might have to divide your graph. 
So from zero to negative one, that's, that represents one, right? So you can, sub, you can divide them into e six equal parts, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's one, negative one over six. That's negative two over six. That's negative three over six, which is negative one half. And then negative three over six, um, which is negative two third. And then that's negative four over six. And that's really two negative, wait, that's five or six, I'm sorry. I did three twice. So um, negative three, yeah. And then negative uh, four over six, that's negative two third, negative five or six, which is just negative five over six. And then negative six over six is negative one, okay? Let's look at try it, solve the inequality m minus uh, one and three fourth is less than equal to negative five over eight. And then graph the solution. Okay, so if you can do it by yourself, come back when you're ready for answers. So if you have a mixed fraction, it's easier to compute when you change it to improper. Okay, so you're going to change this, rewrite this into an improper fraction. One times four is four plus three. So times and plus, okay? It's gonna be seven over four, less than equal to negative five over eight. And then you add seven over four on both sides. So you have N is less than equal to negative five over eight plus seven over four. Okay, in order to add your fractions, you have to rationalize the denominator, make the denominator the same. Okay, so you can leave five, negative five or eight as it is, but you can multiply seven by two, four by two to get an equivalent fraction, 14 over eight. Now you can add 14 and negative five and get um, nine over eight. Okay, so in mixed fraction, that is uh, one and one eighth. Okay, so graph the solution. If your zero is here, and then you have uh, one here and two here, then that's one half, and that's one fourth. And then you divide one fourth into halves again to get one eighth. That's one eighth. So one and one eighth is right here. Okay. And then uh, shade your circle because it has an equal to sign. And then you're going to go left because n is less than equal to. Okay. So you need to have this and that as your solutions. Okay. Let's uh, summarize our lesson. Solving inequalities with addition and subtraction is the same as solving equations with addition and subtraction. The rules apply um, the same way. You can use the inverse relationship between addition and subtraction to isolate the variable. Just make sure you keep the sign as it is, okay? So that was lesson 6-4, solving inequalities using addition or subtraction. In the next lesson, we're going to deal with solving inequalities using multiplication or division. There is a different rule for an additional rule for multiplication or division in the inequalities. All right, I'll see you in the next video. If you have any more questions, feel, feel, feel free to ask um, Ms. King in class. Bye, guys.